if this uh, if this talk had happened a hundred years ago, probably it would be at the Royal Society with all kinds of you know toffee nose people <laughs> sort of in the audience with their whatever wigs or whatever. But uh, and then of course there would be the correspondent of the Times, and they usually used to call the Times the Thunderer. I mean, this is a very odd uh, English euphemism. Um, people mm, have never asked why the Times used to be called the Thunderer. Uh, of course, it has all kinds of connotations, including obscene ones. But I think uh, the reason the Victorians uh, called it the Thunderer is because, you know, the god of thunder. So in other words, it's not the uh, sort of the lower ideas, it's the more sort of uh, posh ideas of being God's voice, you see. So then the thunderer, therefore, the Times correspondent would uh, report it, you know, with the uh, royal sort of engagements, and you would have a debate uh, in the upper circles, etc. It just shows how much Times have changed. The Times is owned nowadays by <laughs> by the Sun newspaper, page three, tits and bum, a sort of editor, the, the uh, Murdoch. And uh, of course, you know, sort of, thank God, all that uh, uh, hypocrisy of, uh, of uh, uh, the ruling classes is almost finished. So um, it is very interesting in terms of internet, what I call the democratization of knowledge. Uh, it is interesting that hitherto uh, mankind uh, kept knowledge, or rather the ruling classes, the upper classes, kept knowledge to themselves. And uh, this is why ideas arose of secret knowledge. This is why it is a very long story, historically, you have esoteric knowledge. Uh, which is another way of saying the secret knowledge which only the ruling classes and the priestly caste, their sort of representatives, therefore religious uh, sort of uh, the religious uh, group kept the knowledge to themselves because for the simple reason that knowledge is power. In other words, to uh, hold their power on the masses they kept knowledge secret. They wanted people to be ignorant. And this is incredible that uh, every time in Britain, in modern Britain, there is an economic crisis, the first ax always falls on education. Mrs. Mrs. Thatcher greatly, grandly, you know, uh, was the perpetrator of this criminal uh, procedure. You know, the first thing uh, was she totally messed up the educational system of the country. So until now, Britain hasn't recovered from the mess which Thatcherism created uh, in the educational system. So, you know, every time, therefore, uh, there is even the whiff of popular consciousness rising and therefore uprising, when people are knowledgeable, they will not accept being slaves of the system. They will have to reject the system because the system is always exploitative and oppressive. Therefore, always the ruling classes hit the educational sort of potential. Ms. Thatcher was notorious for wanting to eliminate one of the best things in this country you can be proud of which is adult educational systems. Places like the City Lit, Mary Ward, which was dedicated originally to women's education. They wanted to eliminate all this. Thank God they failed. Although continuously there is pressure on them in terms of withdrawing public funds, etc. So in other words, um, I want to make you aware that even today, this problem of secrecy in terms of knowledge is a very active problem. It hasn't been eliminated, it hasn't vanished. This problem still exists. And uh, again, you have the problem of the Oxbridge setup, you know. 
where again knowledge is withheld for the elites who will become the ruling classes of the country. The government supposedly trying to break that down and always failing. And one of the wonderful tricks is to, of course, charge now money. I mean, knowledge should be free and available. Uh, one of the best ways the elitists succeeded in hypocritically pretending, while pretending that they want knowledge for everyone, hypocritically they charged money, including the liberals, liberal Democrats, uh, who pretend uh, all the time to be uh, on the left, so say, and yet they are party, you know, the, the deputy prime minister is the first one who reneged on his own promises of making knowledge available, and therefore the exorbitant amount of money being charged to people, to young people, especially the young generations, to put nooses around their necks. I mean, debt is a noose around your neck. If you're indebted all the time, always in debt, you have no time to rebel and make revolution. You have no time to protest socially. Now, therefore, what happens is uh, I, if I was not the passionate socialist that I am, I would have uh, uh, kept this quiet. I would have written a book and sold my knowledge through uh, uh, publishers, etc., and try to make a million on it. But I'm perfectly happy to, uh, I believe as a passionate socialist that knowledge must be free. And it upsets me that, <clears throat> that people abuse their knowledge uh, for money generation. Uh, knowledge should be freely given to everyone who wants it. And so I am totally delighted not to have the thunderer here <laughs> and to give you whatever knowledge I, I don't want to be kind of pretentious, but to give you uh, uh, years and years of uh, research and thinking and share with you today for the first time uh, publicly um, some of the very important so said, therefore, secrets in terms of ancient times or modern times or whatever you want to call it. And uh, I would like to share these secrets. There are quite a few. Uh, I cannot simply because of practical reasons for time. In other words, it should be a series of uh, lectures rather than one off. In other words, I, I will only uh, sort of reveal some of them. Uh, uh, I cannot all of them, of course, because of time elements. But uh, therefore, I shall uh, tonight uh, reveal three absolutely immense, huge <coughs> secrets. Uh, and please remember, this is only secret because it has been kept secret. It has been, although. Yeah. This is another long story. <coughs> like uh, <laughs> many people uh, accuse <laughs> the Freemasons of being a secret society and having great secrets kept. And uh, top Freemasons, the more reasonable ones, always say, actually, we don't have secrets. It is all there if you want to see it. It is only secret to people who don't know it. It isn't that we have withheld them. So, in a sense, therefore, you will soon find out how I have revealed these secrets. Uh, although, just like the atom, the atom has existed, of course, from time immemorial, you know, for, you know, from the Big Bang, the beginning of universe. But the atom was only discovered in the 20th century, at the beginning of the 20th century with the scientist Rutherford and others who finally worked out the structure of the atom, but the atom has always been there. So we only discovered the atom in the 20th century. So in other words, these secrets uh, are there uh, for whatever reason, therefore, I shall explain how uh, you will be hearing it for the first time. Now, here is the challenge, you know, 